Hey, welcome to Weed and Barley. This is a place where you get the ingredients to get to know God. I am Maxine. Welcome to this platform. This is another upload, y'all. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just bear with me in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Last night upload, it did cut off and I advise in the notes for everyone to just go ahead and continue to pray and finish out that prayer and seal that prayer in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And so I pray that you went ahead and you did that. Amen. Hallelujah. There was some uh, issues there. So, uh, just go back. If you didn't do it already, make sure you seal it in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. After you have completed your prayer, amen for day 31. Welcome to day 32. Amen. I'm so grateful to the Lord that we are just moving right along y'all. We are almost at the reach of day 40. Amen. And we have been fasting and we have been consecrating y'all. We have been really seeking the Lord in this hour. Remember you are to continue to fast. If that's something that God is calling you to do, move by the spirit of God on this. Amen. Because God is showcasing himself in every single situation, every single way. And he is speaking y'all. And I'm I'm just so grateful that we are really leaning in to God. And with these times that we are witnessing getting darker, praise God, and we are just moving in the spirit of God, we are in his covering. Amen. So I want to advise each and every one of you, those of you who are seeking the Lord, to stay with the Lord. Amen. Do not dabble in anything else. You want to come unto the Lord pure. You want to you want to come unto the Lord as he is requiring us to. Amen. In his instructions, in his directions. Amen. The way that he wants us to reverence him and to showcase ourselves to him. Amen. And so let's do that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's have self-control when it comes to those things that we can control and anything where you are weak. Amen. Begin to call upon the Lord for strength. Hallelujah. He will strengthen you in the areas in which you're weak. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Father God, for your goodness, grace, and mercy. Oh, Lord God, thank you for this message today. Hallelujah. Today, this message is about your judgment. Hallelujah. And we're so grateful, oh, Father God, that we are aligning our steps to yours, oh, Lord, that we are in your presence. Hallelujah. That we're hearing you like never before, oh, Father God, that we feel your spirit in every way, oh, Father God, that you are directing our steps. Hallelujah. That you're showcasing yourself in every situation, oh, Lord, that you're developing every single circumstance in our lives as long as we're following your will and your ways. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. You haven't left us. You never forsake us. Praise God. You've given us the tools we need, the resources we need. Amen. And you're subduing the enemy. Hallelujah. And you're handing things over in this hour as we are entering into our promised land. Oh, Father God, thank you for day 32. This is congratulations to everybody who's just seeking to complete this, this fast, but more so they're seeking you, Lord. They're seeking your presence. They're seeking your love. Oh, Father God, they're seeking your instructions. They're seeking more of your spirit, oh Father God. And we're just so grateful, hallelujah, for those who are really tuning in and they are having tunnel vision in this hour, praise God, focusing on you. Hallelujah. We give you all glory, honor, and praises, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, may every single household be blessed. May every heart that's ready to receive and ears that's ready to listen. Amen. Hallelujah. Receive what the Lord is saying tonight. This is a meal in which he has prepared. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's eat up and let's be full on this word. Praise God. Hallelujah. A word that will produce crops in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. So this is about God's judgment. Hallelujah. So we're going to start with Leviticus chapter 11. This says clean and unclean food. So we know that uh, Aaron ended up losing two sons because they brought strange fire unto the Lord. That was in chapter 10. And then so Aaron did not eat the sin offering, praise God, because of what had happened earlier. And so uh, Moses understood that. But right now we're moving into those clean and unclean foods. Okay, so chapter 11, verse one says, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, say to the Israelites of all the animals that live on land, these are the ones you may eat. You may eat any animal that has a divided hoof and the choose and that choose the cut. There are some that only chew the cud or only have a divided hoof, but you must not eat them. The camel, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is ceremonially unclean for you. The hyrax, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean for you. The rabbit, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean for you. And the pig, though it has a divided hoof, 
does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you. You must not eat their meat or touch their carcasses. They are unclean for you. Of all the creatures living in the water of the seas and the streams, you may eat any that have fins and scales. But and but all creatures in the seas and or streams that do not have fins and scales, whether among all the swarming things or among all the other living creatures in the water, you are to regard as unclean. And since you are to regard them as unclean, you must not eat their meat. You must regard their carcasses as unclean. Anything living in a water that does not have fins and scales is to be regarded as unclean by you. Amen. So God is very specific and intentional about what is clean and what is unclean. These details are very uh, specific here. So it will be easy for anybody to follow what God is saying regarding what they should consume and what they should not. Praise God. And this is dealing with meat. So remember at the beginning of Genesis, when the Lord began to tell man what meat was, meat was fruit from trees. Amen. But now we see that, uh, over time, uh, man has transitioned into eating meat. Amen. And so God is sharing what is clean and unclean. Verse 13. These are the birds you are to regard as unclean and not eat because they are unclean. The eagle, the vulture, the black vulture, the red kite, the kind of black kite, any kind of raven, the horn owl, the screech owl, the gull, any kind of hawk, the little owl, the cormorant, the great owl, the white owl, the desert owl, the osprey, the stork, any kind of heron, the hoopoe, and the bat. All flying insects that walk on all fours are to be regarded as unclean by you. Now, this is something to think about, especially when uh, you visit other countries or you see uh, visitation of people in other countries, like on YouTube or television, you know, a program or something like that. And you begin to see that the people eat insects. And I used to think about that, like, wow, they eat insects because that was so uncommon in the United States of America. However, this is biblical, y'all. And so it says here on verse 31, there are, however, some flying insects that walk on all fours that you may eat. Those that have jointed legs for hopping on the ground of these you may eat any kind of locust catadid cricket or grasshopper but all other flying insects that have four legs you are to regard as unclean amen so we know it's insects that are considered clean amen consider edible so uh there you go verse 24 you will make yourselves unclean by these whoever touches the carcasses will be unclean till evening whoever picks up one of these their carcasses must wash their clothes and they will be unclean till evening every animal that does not have a divided hoof or that does not chew the cud is unclean for you whoever touches the carcasses of any of them will be unclean of all the animals that walk on all fours those that walk on their paws are unclean for you whoever touches their carcasses uh, will be unclean till evening and so it goes on and on about these animals and what's considered clean and one not clean and then it goes on until evening and even if they touch the clothes the clothes must be washed and it goes on for god is very specific and so i'm sharing this with you because god does care about what we consume Amen. God will speak to people about food. God will speak to people about how much we consume. God will speak to people about not consuming food at all. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God cares about what we put in these bodies because these bodies, although they are ones that he has given us to use. Amen. Hallelujah. They're still temples of God. Amen. Hallelujah. They're, they're the clothing that clothe Holy Spirit. And so we want to take good care of our bodies and we want to know how to take care of our bodies and who else could teach us best of how to take care of our bodies than God. Amen. Verse 39, if an animal that you are allowed to eat dies, anyone who touches its carcass will be unclean till evening. Anyone who eats some of its carcass must wash their clothes and they will be unclean till evening. Anyone who picks up the carcass must wash their clothes and they will be unclean till evening. And it goes on and on y'all praise God. Hallelujah. But let's pick up here where it says, um, verse 43, do not defile yourselves by any of these creatures. Amen. Why do not make yourselves unclean by means of them or 
be made unclean by them. I am the Lord, your God, consecrate yourselves and be holy. So, you know, this is another setting apart. You don't eat what everybody else eat. You don't look like the crowd. Praise God. You look like a child of God. That's the difference. You don't look like the world. You look like a child of God. And so we need to get in the alignment of what God is saying for our bodies. And some of us, praise God, some of us have to eat certain things because of our makeup, right? I'm just sharing. Just because of our makeup, we have to consume certain things. And some people, uh, they are to stay away from certain things. But listen to God and how he's directing you in this season and just be obedient to what he's saying. You want to cooperate with his spirit because he knows best. Hallelujah. Verse 44, I am the Lord, your God, consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. Do not make yourselves unclean by any creature that moves along the ground. Praise God. And think about this. Praise God. You know, in the Bible, it tells us also, it tells us, let me pull it up right quick, that all foods are clean. So when we begin to look at, um, when the centurion was invited to dinner to sit down with Peter, amen. Um, you know, this is where God gave Peter that vision and Peter was letting him know he hasn't defiled his body. You know, he, he doesn't eat those unclean things because the Lord was showing him different, different things that were unclean, but God had called them clean. And he said to Peter, how, how are you going to call this unclean when I've, I've determined it clean, you know? And so Peter, he, he understood the, what the Lord was saying in an hour because he realized that the, this was symbolic to the Gentiles, right? So they were, they weren't uh, a part of the Israelites. However, when God called all clean, amen. So that was the invitation of the Gentiles coming on in, amen, to, to the body of Christ, but also wel the welcoming, the embrace. And so that centurion, remember, he had given so much to the poor that there was a memorial and God had to send an angel his way, amen, for him to go in and connect with Peter. And so I'm sharing that with you because the Bible says that food is clean. Let's look at Mark 7 and 19, and it says, hallelujah. Let's see, because it goeth not into his heart, but into his belly and goeth out into the drought. This, he said, making all meats clean. Amen. And so this is another uh, declaration of food being clean. Hallelujah. Meaning that no food can contaminate a person in the sight of God, in the presence of the Lord. Amen. You know, so we already know that God covers us and he keeps us. Amen. So I just wanted to share that scripture with you. So let's get back to it. And so uh, when we get to verse 46, it says, there are the re these are the regulations concerning animals, birds, and every living thing that moves about in the water, every creature that um, moves along the ground. And you must distinguish between the unclean and the clean, between living creatures that may be eaten and those that may not be eaten. I love this right here because God begins to give the people an assignment. Now, not only... Does Moses have this assignment to just share with the people? Amen. But also and share with the priests, but also share with the congregation because, you know, they're one. And we as a body of Christ, we are one people. So when God gives instructions, we are all following these instructions. Hallelujah. And so when we look at this, God determined what was clean and what was unclean and the Israelites were to follow. That's it. You know, God didn't ask any opinions about what he said was to be clean and what he said was to be unclean. I mean, he didn't ask any opinions. He said, you need to make sure <laughs> this is what he said. Amen. Hallelujah. I love the word of the Lord because it's very clear. Verse 47, you must distinguish between the unclean and the clean, between living creatures that may be eaten and those that may not be. This is the same instruction here when we start to think about, um, you know, uh, discerning spirits. When we begin to think about uh, how do we examine not only ourselves for what is righteous and what is not right, what is of God and what is not, but then looking at the fruit of others. 
we examine them by their fruit, right? We know them by their fruit. So we need to be able to know what is determined righteous in the eyes of God. Amen. Hallelujah. What is his mindset towards his people? Praise God. And what is the opposite of what, is, what are the, who's carrying around a, a boatload of antichrist in it? Amen. And what does that look like? Okay, so that we are paying close attention and to the encounters, but also to the people that are in our circles and our lives that we may pass by, praise God, because God may be calling us to speak a word into their lives. God may be calling us to pray for them, to intercede for them. God may be calling for us, praise God, to do whatever work he has assigned and we have to be ready and willing to obey. Let me say that again. We have to be ready and willing to obey our father. Amen. Hallelujah. So that was Leviticus uh, 11, praise God. Now we're just going to go to, we're going to go to Judges. Amen. We're going to go ahead and go to Judges, praise God. One second here, got to pull it up. Right here in my book, y'all. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So just go ahead and find judges for me. All right. So you know, this is where Abimelech, he uh, starts to lead. Amen. And it's so funny because he appoints himself. And how many of you know leaders or people who just kind of appoint themselves to a position? And, you know, God ain't appointed them, but they appoint themselves. And so it's good, <laughs> you know, in their eyes. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, they've examined the situation. They see that there's no leader. So they want to take advantage of the situation. And so they go forth with, um, you know, making themselves leaders. Well, here in chapter nine, it says in Abimelech, the son of Jerubbabel went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and, com and communed with them. Amen. Look at that word communed. Hallelujah. You know, you have to be careful, praise God, who you sit down and eat with. Amen. Because sometimes over dinner, there's a, a structured conversation about something. Sometimes in breaking bread, amen, hallelujah, in fellowship and laughter, hallelujah, transactions are happening in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And it says, and with all the family of the house of his mother's father saying, speak, I pray you in the ears of of all the men of Shechem, whether it is better for you, either that all the sons of Jerubal, which are three score in ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you, remember also that I am your bone in your flesh. Amen. So now he's just planting a seed that he wants to rule. Hallelujah. And so they began to think about it. And because he's kinfolk, right? Yeah, he's one of us. He's family. I mean, those leaders, those elders, praise God, you know, they began to uh, wrap themselves around that idea, which means that they considered it, right? And as they considered it, you know, what happened was they ended up making Abimelech their leader. He started to rule over them, praise God. Now, this wasn't anything appointed by God. He just went to them. He communed with them and there was a transaction. This is very clear in some of the things that happen still today where people, they're not appointed by God, but because they were rubbing shoulders with somebody they knew. Because they communed and they fellowship with somebody, praise God, who gave them the opportunity, they were, they were able to step over in, praise God, a leadership role that they weren't even appointed for. Amen. And so as you continue to read, this is why, hallelujah, this is why you see the brother shows up, praise God, because what did Abimelech do? Abimelech went through and he ended up, uh, they, the, the leaders, you know, those who were uh, receiving what he was saying, those elders, praise God, they ended up giving him shekels and he took those shekels and he hired men to follow him and those men follow him but from the reading of the bible it says those men you know they were they were no good but he was able to hire them amen it says he hired vain and light persons praise god which follow him and he went unto his father's house this is um verse five at ophrah and slew his brethren 
the sons of Jerubbabel, being three score and ten persons upon one stone, notwithstanding, yet Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbabel, was left for he hid himself. So there was one son left. There were 70 sons, praise God. One son was left. He didn't even notice the son was left. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But here, what the, the whole point of this is, he went and he slew his brothers because he wanted to reign. You see how greed can overtake. You know, when, when someone has your mind on something, praise God, and this is not of God, because, you know, the Bible tells us in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, praise God, but he's killing his brethren because he wants this position. He doesn't want anyone to come up and counter him. Amen. So he just took him out, praise God. And then there's one that's left because he hid himself. He's the youngest. Rightfully so, he hid himself. And this is Jotham. And so what does Jotham do? After... After Abimelech is, is ruling, you know, and he has been doing this for a while, uh, Jotham comes up and he gives a parable and he says, praise God. Let's start at verse seven. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the top of the Mount Gerizim and lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, hearken unto me ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them, and they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness wherewith my wherewith by me they honor God and man and go to be promoted over the trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, should I leave my vine, which cheereth God and man and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the, unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the br br bramble. I said bramble, y'all, but it's bramble. And devour the cedars in Lebanon. Now, therefore, if ye have done truly and sincerely in that ye have made Abimelech king, and if ye have dealt well with Jerubbabel and his house and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands, for my father fought for you and adventured his life and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of Midian, and ye are risen up again against my father's house this day, and have slain his sons, three score and ten persons upon one stone, and have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If ye then have dealt truly and sincerely with Jerubbabel and with his house this day, then rejoice ye and Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo, and let fire come from come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. I want to stop right there in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the curse of Jotham. Jotham made sure that his voice was heard and the and the wicked works of what happened, that transaction of making Abimelech a leader over them. Amen. But he said, hey, if you have dealt, you know, honestly, if this is this is from good intentions, right? Because he's talking about the intentions of their heart, right? If they did this and it and it and it, it's a good thing, amen. 
Hallelujah. Then may they reign and may they be happy, right? May he reign and may they enjoy uh, each other, praise God, and may he do it in the best of his ability and all that. It's like a blessing. But if they came, amen, with, with illness in their heart, if they came, praise God, and they didn't do it upright, this is what Jotham is saying, then, you know, there's going to be fire coming out of Abimelech and there's going to be fire coming out of Shechem towards Abimelech, right? So Abimelech, there will be fire coming out of him to Shechem, hallelujah, and then there will be fire coming out of the men of Shechem to Abimelech. What is that fire? That's the that's the judgment of God. Amen? That's the judgment of God. And so right there, we learn in that right there, hallelujah, that what the Lord is sharing with us, hallelujah, when we begin to continue to read and we see that Abimelech ends up, uh, God sends um, this this uh, evil spirit and it stirs up the men of Shechem and then they begin to, you know, feel some sort of way against Abimelech and then he has to, you know, battle because they, they literally uh, uh uh, ended up talking, um, one of the young men up to feel very, um, bold to even speak against Abimelech. And that was Gal, right? And so when he spoke, uh, you know, they had already built him up and then he began to speak. And then when, um, Abimelech heard about it because, uh, one of the leaders heard Gal speak, you know, and he ended up sending messengers to let Abimelech know what was going on. And Abimelech was ready to fight, right? It's, you could tell that Abimelech, he, he, it's like almost like he didn't even have a conscience, you know, he killed his brothers. Amen. And then, you know, at every angle, he was just ready to battle. And so, and even from the company he kept, the people he hired the, to go along with him as his followers, as the men that were to be close to him, praise God, they weren't even good men. Hallelujah. And so what the Lord was sharing, praise God, as we began to finish this up and we see that, yes, Abimelech reigned for three years. Hallelujah. But it ended up where he ended up dying because a woman, she threw down a milestone, right? A millstone. And it hit him on the top of his head. It crushed his, it crushed his head. Amen. Hallelujah. But he wants to be, um, killed by one of his his own because he didn't want you know anyone to know that he was killed by a woman amen so that lets you know even during this time the stigma right how women was viewed how women uh possibly even you can look into a window of how they were treated amen disregarded you know a woman did this you know how dare a woman take him out so he'd rather for one of his men to just go ahead and kill him amen and so that would be uh, the, the finished work, right. Of his death, it would be by the hands of a man rather than a woman. And so that just says a lot about Abimelech, but I just wanted to share right here because the Lord was bringing up the curse of Jotham, because this is what Jotham said. And you can see just from the death of, of Abimelech that the people did not have good intentions, that they did not make this decision from an upright place, praise God. They made a decision because he was family. They made a decision, praise God, because they were communing and it was just kind of like, uh, you know, it wasn't anything that was ordained or, or a person was anointed and all of that. No, they just chose a man, hallelujah, which means they can, they can also decide not to have a person like that, which when God sent that spirit, hallelujah, to stir them up, amen, that was the judgment of God. That was the fire of God. Stir them up, praise God, to go against Abimelech. So I'm here tonight to let you know that anything that is not upright, hallelujah, in the kingdom of God has to go. That God's judgment, praise God, hallelujah, means that he will come through and he will allow things to happen. He will stir things up by sending a spirit, just like he sent a tormented spirit to Saul. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's the same thing, y'all. So Saul, every time Saul was uh, uh, tormented by that spirit, you know, David had to play. Amen. He had to play. Hallelujah. The, 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 you know, and so he had to play the harp. And so when he was playing this instrument, it, it calmed Saul. 
it calmed him down. And so I'm sharing this to share tonight, praise God. We're getting ready to go into our prayer point, praise God, which is God's judgment, amen. And when you're on the side of God, you don't have to worry about the wrath of God because vengeance belongs to God, hallelujah. When you speak the truth, I'm telling you, God backs you up because the truth is him. When you begin to speak, you're speaking what God is saying because you're speaking who God is, hallelujah. The God is coming off your tongue. So that means that it's going to be accomplished, praise God. So that means any problem prophecies over your life. Anything that God has already said that is already yours. Hallelujah. Anything that you pull from this living Bible, praise God, and you begin to stand on it in the mighty name of Jesus. As long as it is righteous, hallelujah, in the eyes of the Lord, praise God, it is yours. Hallelujah. Don't take hold of these things, praise God, that are unclean in the mighty name of Jesus. Take hold of the things that God called clean, praise God. Take hold of the principles. Take hold of the, the scripture, praise God. Take hold of the word, hallelujah, and stand on it in the mighty name of Jesus, because this is what God is calling us to in Jesus mighty name let's go ahead and pray Father God, we thank you for day 32. This is a glorious day, oh Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus as we have accomplished this today. Tonight, we're coming together, oh, Father God, thanking you. We're coming together glorifying you. We're coming together as we have read the, the book, hallelujah, the page, the chapters of Leviticus and the chapter of Judges, oh, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, learning the content in which you have created for us, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh, Father God, you have inspired so many writings across the land. Oh, Father God, may we encounter you in every space, oh, Father God, in every dimension, oh, Father God, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, we praise you, oh, Lord. We praise you, O Lord. We give you all honor, glory, and praises, O Father God. You are glorious, O Lord. You are a blessing to us, O Lord. Hallelujah. We can do nothing without you, O Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Have your way, have your way. You are righteous, O Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for being righteous in the promised land. Thank you for taking us to the promised land. Thank you for guiding us to the promised land. Thank you for your great shepherding us. Hallelujah. To the promised land. Oh Father God, hallelujah. Thank you for the platforms in the promised land. Thank you for your spirit hovering in the promised land. Thank you for the truth, hallelujah, that lies on the foundation, praise God, of the rock, hallelujah, in the promised land. Thank you for giving us ways, oh Father God, methods and strategies to follow in the promised land, oh Lord, hallelujah, but also in the promised land. May there be upright decisions, oh Father God, hallelujah. We pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that we will make upright decisions, that we will have a heart intended, hallelujah, and focus on you, that we will do things, oh Father God, that's just about you, that we will take ourselves out of the equation, oh Lord God, and we will begin to see you and only you, that we will work by your, your accord alone, oh Father God, that it will be your spirit directing us alone, oh Father God, that we will not sway from side to side, that we will not hear any other doctrines, that we will not kneel to any other, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus, but we will render ourselves over to you, that judgment means, oh Father God, hallelujah, we're giving ourselves to you, we surrender ourselves to you, oh Father God, hallelujah, we love you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. You are the greatest God. You are the mightiest God. Hallelujah. You're the one and only true living God. You are our creator. Hallelujah. You are our master. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, O oh Lord, we follow you. O oh Lord, we're your family. O oh Lord, hallelujah. We are citizens. Praise God. Hallelujah. You have given us the co-heirship. Hallelujah. We are co-heirs to the kingdom with Christ. O oh Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. For what you have already delivered unto us, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. For the position you've already given us. Thank you, oh Lord, hallelujah, for every single plan that you've already developed. Thank you, oh Father God, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you tonight, oh Lord God, just as you uh, you came into the agreement with what Jotham said, hallelujah, which is inspired words by the Lord, praise God. He began to say, hallelujah, if you came from an, an upright place, praise God, in making this decision, hallelujah, may you rejoice in it, praise God, but if this is not an upright decision, praise God, hallelujah, Hallelujah. There will be judgment of God upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. And oh, Father God, hallelujah. We decree and declare, hallelujah, that we are ones walking in upright decisions because we're following your decisions. We're obedient to your decisions. We're cooperating with your spirit, oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Father God, hallelujah. Touch us, oh Father God. Touch our families, oh Lord. Touch our households, oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name.